Hey kids, welcome to module four, lesson three for fifth grade Eureka Math. And the objective for today is to interpret a fraction as division. So fancy way of saying, let's try to understand that when you set up a number or a couple of numbers like this in a fraction, that it also equals a division problem. And we've talked about this a little bit in previous videos. I've said, hey, you can always divide the top number by the bottom number to find uh, a mixed number, which is right here. This is the mixed number form. Or you can do the division and get a decimal value, which we will get to very soon. Or you can just do the division up until you have a remainder, and then you can put the remainder in a fraction. So today's lesson is about showing kind of the same thing over and over and over, which they're actually gonna ask you to do a lot in fifth grade. So we're not solving brand new things as we move through uh, all these different ways of showing fractions. We're doing the same thing. So check it out. Let's say we have a, a problem with four holes and it's being divided by three things. You have to understand that four would be the whole that would go first being divided by the three, which is the divisor. Now, how would you set that up in a fraction? It would be four thirds. This unit form they're gonna ask for, uh, for you to create today. I will typically solve this last because it's gonna kind of appear maybe in word problems where you'll see it written this way, but otherwise, like in life, you don't really see anything ever written this way. If you have um, a fraction, it's gonna be written like this. Uh, I would always take an improper fraction, turn it into a mixed number. You might be dividing things for sure. Uh, but the last way that we're gonna be working with these fractions today in the standard algorithm, you're going to be checking your solution. And you're gonna check that not by multiplying, but by repeated addition, because we're not quite there to the multiplication yet. That'll come later. Uh, but we are gonna do three times one and one third, which would be one and one third three times by adding. We are getting better at adding mixed numbers, so this is what we're doing today. We do have to do the unit form though, so let me talk about that for a quick sec. Basically, if I have four things, um, and they're divided by three, and we get our form four thirds for one and a third, you're trying to understand like how many pieces there are. And so I'll, I'll draw a little picture on one of them um, to show you how the, the thirds all come together. But if you have these four things divided by three, uh, then we've got these thirds. And so you're creating all these thirds. And so three, six, nine, 12, that's where you get your 12 thirds. Divided by three, it makes four thirds. It's just, you're making the same thing over and over. It's just so redundant. So anyway, that's what we're doing today. Um, this could be the type of word problem where you would see the words being, the numbers being used with the words. Like for example, four kilograms of oats equally divided into three bags. What's the weight of each bag? That would be a typical way to set it up. Uh, what happens if you double the oats? Doubling the oats is again looking at what you're previously given and doubling it. Um, the three stays the same, but everything else kind of changes a little bit. And so you can see how to solve that all the way through. So kind of enough of that. I just want to move on and get into the book and have you guys um, jump right in and start solving these. I think the easiest way to do it is to see it and practice it and get going with it. So the first problem is totally done for you. You don't have to do anything. So when we get stuck here, we're gonna refer back to this. Um, just real quick, if you have five divided by four, I'm gonna skip this for a, a minute and go back to it. Five fourths, simply flipped around, it's four fourths plus one fourth. So there's your four fourths making the one whole. We're gonna write the mixed number with the holes, not the four fourths. Then you take the uh, top number, divide by the bottom number, and set it up with the standard algorithm. First, you would get five divided by four for one. Multiply, subtract, and put your remainder in a fraction. This one here goes on the top, this four goes on the bottom. Here's your check with your repeated addition. Answer four times, okay? 
uh, again, whole numbers first, numerators second, and then change whatever you get here into, if it's an improper fraction, change to a mixed number so you can add it. If it's a whole number, then you just add it anyway. So let's get moving on to B, give you a shot at this. So uh, the unit form, again, being first, what you might notice is that if I have 5 divided by 4, I have 5 whole things divided into 4 pieces, which means you're going to be basically multiplying in order to get this first number. You take these two numbers and you're going to multiply them. Why? Because if I was making a picture of three things and I was dividing them all in half, I would have how many halves? Well, I would have six, but you get it by multiplying those two numbers, okay? So it's just understanding what kind of picture you're creating. We'll come back to that in a second. So if I have three divided by two, I have three divided by two. And then here's the redundancy. We're not solving anything new. We're just looking to make sure, yes, two goes into three one whole time with one left over. So then here's where you set it up. It's three divided by two. Two goes into three one whole time. Now here's where you try to remember your long division steps. That's the division. Here's the multiply step. Here's the subtract. Then we stop, put our remainder in a fraction, and our answer is one and a half. Notice that the answer is the same thing you got for your mixed number. So it's nothing new. We're just proving it. So for the check, how many times do you have to repeat the one and a half? You're going to repeat it two times. One and a half plus one and a half. So you'll do repeated subtraction instead of multiplication. <clears throat> Add the whole numbers. Sorry, it sounds like I need water. Add the whole numbers. Get a two. Add your two numerators. One plus one is two. There's your second fraction. We have a whole number here, so two plus one is three. Three is what my whole is right there and right there. And so when you get your answer, you're just going to kind of double check. Hey, am I getting the right thing? I should be getting the whole. And we did. So uh, pat yourself on the back. And then let's move on to this last little piece here. So if I have six halves divided by two, if you look at the numbers that we're dividing, six divided by two, you get your three. Three halves is this word form of the fraction that we're creating, or like the unit form, as they say, for the fraction that you're creating. Again, this part is kind of less intuitive, and it's really a lot easier if you have all the other numbers that you can kind of double check yourself with before you move on. So, now for this one, they start us off with the unit form that's so awkward, but you can also double check in the long division, what do I have here? If you read it properly, you would see that it's six divided by four, or six divided by four. Double check yourself, six times four would make the 24. Yes, that's right. Fourths, great. <clears throat> 24 divided by four is six. There's your fraction that would go here for your improper fraction, six fourths. Six divided by four. How many times can I fit four into six? One whole time with two left over. One and two fourths. Also equal to one and a half. Let's just not worry about that for right now. Four fits into six one time. That's your division step. Then the multiply step. Four times one is four. Then the subtract step. Get two. And do you see why I said don't simplify? I just want to make sure I'm getting uh, the same answer. And I am. So now I'm going to take my one and two fourths and I have to check and make sure that this is accurate. So I'll take one and two fourths and I'm going to repeatedly add it this many times. So it's four times. Okay, so I have my one and two fourths, four times, which means I have one, two, three, four, and then I have two, four, six, eight, and I have to combine those two. Now, eight fourths all by itself is eight divided by four, which is what we're learning here as we do these improper fractions and flip them around. Eight divided by four is two, so it's really four plus two. So we should really have six which is the whole, which is our whole here. Okay, so hopefully you're feeling good about this. 
This one, they gave you a couple of the easy ones, five divided by two, five divided by two, and then two fits into five two and a half times. So it's five divided by two. Two fits into five two times, two times two is four, multiply, subtract, there's your one out of two, two and a half. And we're going to repeatedly add this two times, get your four plus two halves, that makes one, so we get five. Here's our whole, and it matches. Great, so what do we do here for our unit form? Remember to multiply two times five so we can see all the halves, and it's gonna be uh, 10 halves. And we're gonna divide by the divisor, two, Okay, and you can always just double check and see what's happening in each place just to uh, see where everything goes. And that equals your answer, which is five halves. Five halves is what we have here, five halves. Okay, so that's all just repeating yourself for each of those columns. And then on the back, we get to kind of uh, put it into word problems and see how that goes. A principal evenly distributes six reams of copy paper to eight fifth grade teachers. Oh, yay, I did need paper. Uh, how many reams of paper does each fifth grade teacher receive? Explain how you know using pictures, words, or numbers. Oh, I always love the or because you can choose one. I'll probably use a couple different things so you guys can see what's happening. So if we have six reams of paper... Let's just make a box for each one. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are the six reams. And so we're gonna have our six divided by eight. Six reams shared evenly. When you see the word evenly distribute, <coughs> shared, gave out, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we hear the eighth, eight fifth grade teachers. This is your divisor. Those are the people that are doing the sharing. You might notice that if I only have six things being divided by eight, that nobody's gonna get a whole ream. It's gonna be six divided by eight in fraction form, okay? Now, six divided by eight or into eighths would look something like that, dot, dot, dot. You would divide them all up. And um, if you, if you, uh, take this and you divide it all out, what, what you're going to see, it's kind of like just what we did on the previous side. You end up with six eighths again because we're doing the same thing over and over. And so when I have six eighths, which is less than one whole, four, five, six, okay, so six eighths is what each teacher receives. You can add up um, your six eighths or you can simplify it divide by two halves and get three-fourths, which would be what that would look like <clears throat> for each teacher. Okay, so um, if you wanna do all the steps, that's really up to you. If you wanna make unit form, you would look here and you'd see you'd have 48 eighths. Okay, and then you divide by eight. You can do all that if you feel like it, but you really don't have to. It's just, do you understand uh, what you're doing? And again, as long as you set it up, you're putting it into fraction form because fraction form is the answer. So strange, really strange problems here. If there were twice as many reams of paper, <clears throat> that makes 12, and half as many teachers, okay? That would be four. How would the amount... <clears throat> I think I need water. Hmm. Okay. Oh, better. Uh, if you have twice as many, that's 12. Half as many teachers, that's four. How would the amount each teacher receives change? Well, we're definitely going to have more paper per person. Explain how you know using pictures, words, or numbers. Well, if you take, let's make a picture and if I have all these reams of paper, okay, divided by the four teachers, okay, it clearly shows you that you can have three reams per person. 
And so when you have a larger hole or larger dividend and a smaller divisor, you get a bigger answer. If you have a smaller hole or dividend and a larger divisor, you're going to have something that's less than one. So the picture works as well. You can put it in a fraction, 12 divided by 4. Uh, either way, it's all, it's all the same thing. That's what we're showing today, how repetitive we can be. Um, this is a good one, pretty typical for a test question. A caterer has prepared 16 trays of hot food for an event. The trays are placed in warming boxes for delivery. Each box, warming boxes, can hold five trays of food. How many warming boxes are necessary for delivery if the caterer wants to use as few boxes as possible? Explain how you know. So let's take all the food. We can't leave any of the trays out, so that's 16. But if we have to divide it by the, uh, the boxes that only hold 5, it would be 16 divided by 5. 16 divided by 5 in fraction form. Now, with that mixed number, 5 goes into 16 three whole times, but with one left over. Now, this is all real food, so what are you going to do with that one-fifth? Well, it has to get delivered, and if this represents the boxes, three and one-fifth boxes, you can't, like, break the box and say, well, here's, here's a fifth. It, it won't keep the food warm. So what do you do? You have to use the remainder, or the one-fifth, to bump up. To the next hole, which would make four boxes your answer. Okay? Then, if the caterer fills a box completely before filling the next box, which of course you would likely do that, what fraction of the last box will be empty? So we have our three and one fifth boxes, so it's the one fifth that's not full. So if you want to know what a full box looks like, so it looks like it's five-fifths. And so the, the difference is going to be how many it would take to fill. What fraction of the last box will be empty? Four-fifths will be empty. So that's it for today. Click subscribe. Come back again. We'll do more math videos. We will finish this whole program. See you guys on the next one. Bye for now.